Hello, welcome to 50 question Friday number 13. Sorry for being late here this morning and didn't get a chance to shower and shave or even have a coffee yet this morning. It's been, uh, you know, one of those times. Actually, we had my mom in this morning with some stitches and I just got back from the ER. So we're ready to, to get going here this morning. Um, Hey everybody, good to see everybody here on the chat. Uh, again, if you're watching the recording, please do come join us on the live chat sometime. Uh, you can plug in your questions here and everybody is welcome to chat along the way. Um, and we'll get started here with uh, some of the emailed questions. And again, thank you all for your patience this morning here. Let's see. I know I had some emailed questions here. Um, okay, what are some of the uses for the 29-inch golden fire ring that somebody has? Um, and actually, I know I need it too. Let's take a quick moment here. Go into the heart space. Connect. All right. So if you'd like to follow along, you're welcome to. And just close your eyes and put your attention onto your physical heart where you find your light, your soul's fire. You can either drop your light down into the core of the earth and connect with the earth, or you can just simply breathe up that energy from the earth right up into the heart. However you do this, you are connecting your heart to the heart of Gaia, to the heart of Mother Earth, and breathing that energy into your heart. And next, it is connecting with Source, Soul, Creation, God, bringing in that energy into the heart. And the third breath, breathing in Earth and Sky together. Mixing that with you within your heart, so then you become a column of light that is grounded, connected, and you are that connecting point between creation and earth. Fantastic stuff. All right. Here we go. So the first question from the email was how to use the 29-inch golden fire ring. So um, the golden fire rings, the large practitioner rings, are a phenomenal set of rings to, they, they have so many different uses. Basically, you can use them in an active sense, uh, you know, by running that ring over top of a person. Um, you know, we have some of those videos where we actually take that large ring and we drop it down over the person so that it is cleaning, clearing, aligning, balancing, connecting, all the fun stuff. Um, so that is one of the active ways to, to utilize that. Another one of the more of an active way to use it is to actually just sit them on the ground. I stand in my rings all the time when I need to connect, when I do any energy work. Um, I, I stand within that that column of energy of that 29 inch golden fire ring um, or any of the, the practitioner rings. So um those are two of the ways now one of the ways that we also utilize these large practitioner rings is we'll hang them up on the wall right above your head so basically how a tensor ring you know it's creating a column of light so out of this ring there is a column of energy that comes out of here so if you hang one of the large rings right on your wall or on the headboard right above your bed so that way when you are sleeping here at night you are laying right within the column of energy of the rings so using the practitioner sets by sleeping within the column is a really phenomenal way to to utilize those and and for that matter any size of ring i mean there's the the 15 inch golden fire ring which is a really versatile ring also is another one that you can hang right above your head and it will encompass the majority of, of your physical within that ring. Um, so that's the only question that we have with the um, emails. So we will go in into the questions. Uh, so Renard's asking, uh, how do tensor fields work with 
servitors. I have two. Two I use is wonder if these fields affect the physical representation as well. I don't know what servitors are. Do I need to look that up really quick? A person who serves or attends on a social superior. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, so, Renard, if you could re-ask that question, appreciate her. Um, and then also another question, how do tensor fields work with mirrors? Um, tensor fields go right through mirrors. Mirrors do not affect tensor fields whatsoever. Um, you know, you can, because a mirror is simply reflecting of, you know, the visible light spectrum, but the tensor field permeates all physical matter. Um, so it goes through there. Now, if it reflects any energetics, the energetics that a mirror may reflect is simply because of your unconscious or conscious intention, however it comes. So if you're using a tensor ring in a mirror and you are getting some kind of an energy phenomenon, it is because you are creating that, you are intending that, that's part of your creation. Um, otherwise, the, the mirrors will not you know, do anything with, with tensor fields themselves. Um, and then let's see, Sinan, uh, can sleeping with any generator increase the heartbeat? Um, you know, we have seen where, um, you know, people come into contact with the golden fire ring that very first time and it can increase your heart rate, um, because there's a lot of things that are going on with the body and it might even be that sacred heart activation. So, I mean, I've seen a lot of people who get a, you know, a ring and their heart rate will increase, but then it just slows back down again. It's just, it's, it's just that initial, um, so as far as the question, can sleeping with any generator increase the heartbeat? Um, if, if you mean as far as the speeding, or do you mean like as far as the strength of the heart, I guess, is, is, is one other way I'm interpreting your question there, Sinan. Um, but as far as, you know, your, this, the speed of your heart rate, um, it can increase, but then it'll just go right back down again. And it only happens for some people that I've seen. Um, but as far as, um, you know, the strength of the heart, I do know a lot of people who wear pendants um, to strengthen the heart. And that's just what they do, that they feel that they're working with, with their heart. Um, so I know a lot of people who use the tools for that intended purpose, of course. Um, what is the sphere of influence for the wings of talk is another question there. So the wings of talk, um, it's innately the wings of talk. It has that larger area of influence that is around 200 feet around there. Now that can, that can fluctuate. I mean, that, that wings of talk can be anywhere from like 20 feet and it can expand out. Um, and, and that does that again through, through your own intention and your attention onto it. But innately, innately it's about 50 feet um, without anybody, you know, putting their attention onto it. Uh, Christine, have you seen any amplifications to your grid points during these past three eclipses? Do you know if there's a difference between lunar or solar energies affecting the grid points? Um, so as far as the, the grid points that, that we're doing, um, no, I, I don't see, you know, and I haven't paid enough attention, but nothing has come to my awareness on how the grid points or even the grid lines that we're creating are shifting at all during specific, um, you know, astral things like the, the eclipses. Um, and then also asking if the lunar or solar energies affect the grid points. And 
You know, it almost seems like there's almost a tidal effect with these with the the lunar. I mean, something's presenting there. It's nothing major, but it almost seems to me it's presenting as like almost a softening. I'm not sure. Um, we'll have to look into that more about if the the grid points and the grid lines are affected by. Uh, solar lunar because usually that's something that um, if there is an effect and I'll tell you that right now if there is an effect it's a very minute effect on a very small portion of it because basically these the the fields that these grid points are creating um, kind of like the you know the the other question there about um, about working with mirrors and things like that is that the the tensor fields are so far beyond a lot of those things such as you know eclipses um the gravitational pull from the moon things like that um you know the the, the fields that we're working in are so far beyond a lot of these other concepts um you know like yesterday i had talked to somebody they were asking for a ring that would resonate with the the schumann resonance and you know, and kind of how I explained to them too is that um, the, these fields they they contain the frequencies of the Schumann, but they're so far beyond that, and so um, you know, as are we. You know, there's all these things that can influence us: our own emotional fields, the moon, collective consciousness. Um, there's so many things that can influence us, but that's also influences us when we are not aware the more that we stand in our own light in our own power connected we transcend so many of those things when we can step fully up and in um, those things just become obsolete they they don't they don't affect us um, you know and that's really what we're trying to trying to get to is we we would like to be able to transcend a lot of those things that cause us to have the emotional reactions that cause us to have any of that emotional stuff um you know that we want to be able to step into a space to where we're basically untouchable to where that we are in full alignment and we can just go out and create um, but yeah good question there christine about the the moon affecting the grid points and we'll certainly look into that more but uh, again my answer is that they would just be a, a little portion of it it wouldn't affect the entire um the entire grids at all um because then christine goes on to say that uh during her new moon and full moon ceremonies her calm of light was brighter than it has been in the past and you know and that's what a lot of people say too is that a lot of these things that are openings they're gateways but they're not necessarily a real thing, but they are something that allows us to step in and to open up um, because it is that that uh, it's a co-creation. So to me, too, Christine, that's what it feels like is that you were just more empowered at that time. Um, it, that's just what I feel from that anyway. Um, and then so Renard's going on uh, servitors servitors are thought forms created in the astral plane to serve certain intentional purposes i created thought forms that placed in toys as physical connections okay sorry so the let me go back to a question here uh that renard is asking now that he's clarified what the servitors are and the servitors are basically thought forms um so i was wondering how tensor fields work with servitors um so as far as thought forms now and i'm sorry because we're probably not connecting right with the jargon and and uh, the actual meaning here so for me thought forms are like what people unconsciously think because like my daughter is very sensitive to thought forms uh stuff that people unconsciously create and it's in their field and for most people they don't notice those but for like my daughter those affect her and so the tensor tools you know especially the golden fire like the golden fire generators 
will clear a lot of those so that way she's not so overburdened as she goes out into the world um so as far as as clearing servitors and, and i'm sorry that again there renard because i'm very unfamiliar with with what it is um about the servitors but the tensor fields will clear unconscious thought forms so we might have to go back to that one again um ryan what's happening from temperature increase in the body when wearing tensor rings and coils why does the sometime fluctuate your body's temp is it due to healing happening or upgrading your frequencies so with the golden fire tools a lot of people when their sacred heart activates that trifold gold flame heart when the sacred heart activates for a lot of people it brings a temperature change it's a heat um, and then also too there's um, a lot of people who um, have different sensations based on that some people actually get a cool clear waters so what you feel with any of the tools is very you know it's very much an individual reason for that um, for whether the heat or the cool the temperature changes but then also with the temperature changes um, Ryan that's asking is that yes these tools are working with our physical body they're working on a cellular level um, they're helping to do the clearing work the rewiring work the reconnecting raising frequency and vibration um, dropping out all the 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 dense um, you know that holds that are the anchors so our physical body is a lot of anchor for the energetic stuff that we carry the emotions um a lot of the things so the tensor fields are certainly doing a lot on the physical body to have the increases in temperature um, so it's definitely a good thing when you start to notice fluctuations in your body temperature you know the tools are doing something there and your body um, when using the ascension grid pyramid and the quantum grid point to establish grid points and lines, does the energy stay aligned with a third with the etheric templates? I've noticed more dragon awareness coming into my reality since I've been working with these tools. So let me go back to this question here that Pam's asking. So when the ascension grid point, so when the ascension grid pyramid, which is this guy, and the quantum grid points. So when they're creating these these lines, um, so Pam is asking if um, these stay aligned with the etheric templates of the tools. Yes, but so when you set out a grid and you're using these tools and you've created, um, you know, three points, let's say, and you've created this grid, they are going to hold the same energetics that are carried within the pyramids, which is that quantum heart. And everything that comes with it that field of neutrality um you know the sacred heart everything everything that is a part of the quantum heart is carried in this field but you are also creating your own localized reality that is a part of creating with these grid points is that you set these grid points up and when you do and you're creating a grid you're creating that grid basically to hold a space and that space um, not only does it work with your conscious intentions, but it also works with the quantum heart, the soul, and the soul intentions. So you can have your human base intentions when you are placing these grids. And so with these grids, some of your conscious intentions could be something like um, creating a healing space or creating a space for, um, you know, creativity, uh, whatever it is that you're purpose and intent of creating this space because that's what the grid points are doing is they are creating a sacred space and what you do with that sacred space the quality of it you have that control of the, what the quality of that sacred space is um, and again between you and your soul so uh, one of the things that Pam said that she noticed was the the dragon awareness was coming in more with using these and very true um, if we are already connecting in with the dragons, I'm actually getting, um, considering doing a, 
workshop in Oregon here in about a month and it's uh, would be working with the dragons and that's what I wanted to do was to create a space, a field with these grid points to be able to work with the dragons. So that way in our class and our workshop that um, that energy is more readily available there. Um, let's see. And then Gail, is there a way to connect the elongated extensions for the Ascension Pyramid to the little grid pyramid? So let's see, the legs to the little desktop grid. Oh, okay. So the Ascension Grid Pyramid, so the, the question was about adding legs to the Ascension Grid Pyramid, you know, so that you could sit underneath of this. So this particular pyramid is not bringing through the same energetics inside. Okay, how to explain this? Outside of the small pyramids, the mini pyramids, or any of the ascension pyramids, outside the energetics is the same as this guy, inside, outside, every place. So this guy right here creates the same energetics as outside here. But inside of these pyramids, where you find that field of neutrality and all of that, um, these will not produce the same energetic effect as inside of these pyramids. So you're not going to be able to put legs onto this particular model and sit under it and have the same energetics as you would inside of this. This guy is basically just consider this as more like a ball, a bubble of energy that is like a sunshine that's radiating out. It's not different inside, outside the tip, anywhere. It, it, it's, it's all a whole and complete energy. And that energy is the same that you find outside of the pyramids here. So if you really want to get into that field of neutrality um, very tangibly, then yes, you want to be inside of one of the pyramids. Um, this is still going to bring through that field of neutrality um you know on the quantum heart and all that it's just not as tangible it's it's something that it's there that space is held but you have to more connect into it um where you are inside of one of the ascension pyramids you can't help but to be just immersed into that field but with these guys with any of the other grid points you have to actually connect into that field it's there we have to consciously connect to it. Um, that makes sense. And again, you're welcome to re-ask these questions at any time. <clears throat> yes. <laughs> and I apologize for being a little off, guys. I tell you what, it's been quite the ride here over the past months. Um, last week, you know, we didn't have the webinar. The week before, we didn't because um, I was on the road. But then last week, I just couldn't, um, I, I couldn't be here. It's just been one of those times. Um, you know, so much is moving and shifting in our world right now. And I'm sure Brenda won't mind me telling her story, but she has a tattoo on her left leg. Well, one day the tattoo moved to her right leg and it stayed on her right leg for a little while. Then it moved back to her left leg again. Um, for me, it's been don't remember things. I mean, I don't remember my measurements when I go to twist wire in the morning. I have to look them up again. Um, and I just haven't been here for some time. I've just been kind of, you know, smiling and faking it to make it, you know, because I've been someplace else. And we did work with Brenda yesterday, too, to where we had to fish um, part of her back from from a space that she was holding space at. Um, you know, so much is happening right now, you guys, with with the collective consciousness, timelines, realities of our Earth and of this universe. And and we're all feeling it in all different ways. Um, it's a beautiful thing, though. It really is. One of these days, you guys, <laughs> it's going to be a whole different world. It already is a whole different world for me today. Oh, my goodness. It's... It's good to be here. All right. So um, 
going on, Gail. The legs of the little desktop grid pyramid look smaller in diameter. And and yeah, so that's it. Um, so yes, because Gail and I understand that you can't afford to get, you know, a two thousand dollar pyramid. Um, you know what I would say if you want to get the most out of um the energetics of the pyramids what i would suggest would be to get the little guys set up a grid a minimum of three in your space um what would be really nice would be to to get five of them so that you can put one in each corner so like let's say for instance gail with you um what i would do if is i would get five of these guys and I would put them under my bed. I'd put them one at each corner, and then I would either put this one right up the head or hold on to it. I know they're a little pokey. We're considering actually making rounded ones here at some point in time, but use that fifth one as your interface to speak in, to put your intentions into there uh, of everything that you wanna receive you know, from these fields of neutrality, the work that you wanna do for yourself, um, Put those intentions into that field and then sleep with that at night um, and you can do that with three so if you just put three pyramids and you put them in your space set that intention when you put the pyramids down that you want to receive you know whatever it is that you wanting to work with gail whether it is to receive that full energetics of that field of neutrality um, and they will bring it through again that field that is inside of the pyramid is very much available to us consciously it is available to anybody who is within the field of these you just have to actually ask for it and bring it through that's it, it can be as simple as that go into your heart space ask for that field of neutrality bring it through and then you can be in that field that is within here it these it, they're all tools and again we can access this stuff on our own but um i know the tools are really nice to have tools are great sometimes um <laughs> i'm not wearing any tools yet this morning goodness no coffee either all right so next uh david do you know of anyone who is currently or has in the past experienced with water and ten has experimented with water and tensor rings specifically any measurements of energy change scientifically controlled studies of any kind such as when Marcel marcel vogel measured the intentions yeah actually gals at dancing with water have done extensive tests with the tensor rings and uh so has uh like philip callahan um you know he's he's there let's see and gosh who else there's some other people that have done some some scientific studies with water and, and we we have too with krishna um and krishna has done some gdv photoimaging with water um and oils so basically you a really good reference is dancing with water so you can actually go to dancingwithwater.com. Their book is phenomenal. It's like 20 bucks. But um, they've shown how you can put two beakers of water in a lab and put them on a balance beam, put a tensor ring under one, and it actually becomes lighter in weight. What they're seeing that is doing is it is creating ormus in the water, is creating such a high spin rate. Um, it changes the pH of the water. Um, we've actually seen in some studies where it uh, will actually clear the fluoride in water but other studies it doesn't it just depends on who's doing the study um so there are studies done with water most definitely um with the tensor rings and then there's a lot of people out there i see on a lot of the facebook pages that are doing like freeze tests well the where they will take two glasses of water and they'll put them in the freezer and one with a ring underneath of it and and then they see what the what the water columns do things like that um but your your other testing though some of your scientific stuff will be in dancing with water uh renard what are some of the best ways to work with the dragon wand um working with the dragon wand 
for for me i just carried mine for a couple of years i mean i i just always carried my dragon wand on person and that's kind of how i worked with it was i just kept it in my field now that's a passive way to work with the dragon wand i also sleep with the dragon wand so i work with it in a passive way to actively work with the dragon wand of course you can use it to run energy just like you would with the golden fire and light wand is that you can just run energy with it and i've heard some phenomenal stories of people doing healing work with them running energy on a neck and the neck just aligns things like that so you can use them to to run energy um also with this new dragon wand is um basically just holding it and creating a field and just being in touch with that field because these fields are always there just like that quantum heart is always there with these fields but to get in touch with it so when you're holding your dragon wand and you're going into the heart space and you just expand that field so that it covers that entire room or that space that you're in and that field is the field where you can start to work with the dragons more um the the dragons are phenomenal beings they're they're masters they they're healers they're they're all forms of energy workers um so the dragons are pretty phenomenal to work with if you create that field you just you get a better access with them it's a more tangible interface um so those are a couple of the ways to work with the dragon's wand is um you know in that passive sense and in the active sense of creating the field or running energy with it. Um, and again, don't let that be the limiting ideas for working with the dragon wand. Um, you know, and again, for years, we were told not to give instructions with the tools because we did not want to limit how people use them. Um, so please do play with the dragon wand. Again, these tools are super intuitive. They bring through that intuitive aspect of you because they're connecting you to your higher self. So if you pick up one of the tools, go into the heart space and just do whatever it is that you feel to do with it and, and see you might find some pretty phenomenal new things to do with the tools. Uh, Ryan. I thought it was just me. It seems like timelines are merging in and out of different realities. Thanks for the confirmation. Can you speak on using tensor rings with supplements um, and helping food last longer? Also use with plants and their effects with plant growth and nutrition. Yeah, I tell you, these timelines and realities, it's been one of those things um, we've been noticing all the, the different timelines clearing here for, gosh, about a year. And then well, or more, a couple of years, we've been noticing that. And then um, here the past few months, um, here in 2020, it's been, gosh, we've been noticing it a lot and with a lot of people. And then uh, a lot of the timelines that we've been working with, well, a lot of the work that we've been doing has been clearing miscreations, uh, not really miscreations, but clearing things that were created out of the duality experience. And really, that's what I feel this whole timeline shift is, this timeline, and I call it timelines realities. But, you know, I feel like this is what that whole timeline reality shift is about, is that we are clearing all of those things within our own personal and the collective and greater of timelines that were created out of the duality. Um, that were created out of fear, necessity, survival, duality. And I feel that all of those are just being cleared and that we're stepping into a whole different collective timeline that is more about the neutrality, um, about creating in a whole new way. It's To me, it is the creation of this whole new board game we've been talking about forever, um, that we're stepping out of it. It's, it's an exciting time. Um, Let's see, can you speak on using tensor rings with supplements and helping food last longer? Um, yeah, so working with, with supplements, um, you know, basically there's, there's some supplements that you can check, you can muscle test and see if there is a supplement that is beneficial to you. Now there's all forms of kinesiology, muscle testing, you know, that whole gamut. To me, I make things simple and easy when I go to do my muscle testing. Usually I'll stand up, I'll take something 
and I'll put it in front of my sternum, um, right here. I'll just put I'll put something right there, and I'll see how that makes my body feel. Or else I'll be standing and I'll either lean into it or I'll be pushed away. That's kind of how your body will tell you. That is one way of, of doing kinesiology, muscle testing. For me, I'll just bring something up to my sternum. I can feel it right away how it would energetically make me feel. So with a supplement, you can find that maybe you have a supplement that doesn't feel quite right. You put it inside of the ring for a couple minutes. Bring it back out, test it. A lot of times that will shift how you are, how you react to that supplement. That maybe now it is beneficial for you. Um, so we do notice that the tensor fields will change um, supplements, whether they are beneficial or not to you. And especially like medications. So when we get to medications, um, that's another thing is that you can use your consciousness, run energy, or use your wand, use a ring, however, to change a medication as well. Because most medications, it's the like with our with our dad, when our dad was around, he could not take any pharmaceuticals for the fact that it was not the physiological issue. It was the energetic issue connected to that pharmaceutical. Because so most of our, all pharmaceuticals have some funky energetic thing connected to them. So putting them inside of the ring helps to clear that funky energetic connection so that then you receive just the physiological aspect of it. Um, and so putting your supplements, medications inside of a ring is a phenomenal thing to do. Oils too. So if you use essential oils as supplements, um, essential oils, it, it, your oils last longer. Um, because it keeps that high spin rate to the oils. It does work with your oils. It potentizes them just like it potentizes water. Um, and it can do that with food too. So then also, then it gets to the point of food. You say about food staying fresher. And then too, also about food that may be a GMO food. So that's, again, you can use muscle testing and ask, okay, is this apple beneficial for me? And you might get a no. Well, you might get a mixed answer. Run energy to it from the heart. Do whatever it is that you do for work on that apple. Then ask the question again. And we're able to shift and change a lot of that stuff, um, you know, to be beneficial for us. So with your food, to make your food last longer, that's a really good question because I have not experimented enough with making food last longer inside of a ring. Um, be great to have an experiment like that. And then the last part of that question was about plant growth and nutrition. And most definitely the tensor fields are not only they promoting root growth, but they're also, um, they, they do help with plants. Um, gosh, we have somebody brought a rose, a cut rose into the shop. They put it on a coaster and it's growing new leaves, a cut rose. Um, let's see, I used to, I used to be into horticulture and I had a greenhouse and I had some plants that had a blight and at the time I was using chemicals, whatever, I could not find any chemicals that would get rid of that blight. Um, that's when I first started making the tensor tools. I made a giant tensor field generator. I put it around my one mother plant that had the blight within a month. It was clear. Um, you take cuttings from that plant and because it is a bl that blight, it, it is a DNA, uh, based, um, issue and it took care of the blight. So then I could take cuttings from that plant. They were all fine. Um, and then there are others who in commercial agriculture who also use the tools. So in commercial agriculture, there are a lot of people who use the seven inch, um, harmony generator. And we've done experiments like in New Zealand where between the Harmony generator, actually we were using a 333 generator, um, but a tensor field generator. We were using a tensor field generator and frequencies, and we were able to push beetles out of a field. Well, we create a push pull, we create a, a safe space for the beetles, and then we create a push space. Um, so for agriculture, gardening, plants, yeah, the, the Harmony is the one that I usually suggest for using with your plants. 
Um, for me, the, the harmony generators are one that are connecting more with, with your earth based stuff, with your, um, with the divas of the land, your, the consciousness of the plants, all of that. Um, to me, the harmony generators are the ones to use for, for your plants. Um, and then Gail, uh, we have a wooden Nubian pyramid that we store water in. We each drink a gallon a day, so there are always 14 gallons from which we each take and drink every day. Would hanging a tensor ring over the top of the pyramid create ormus in our water? Wow, Nubian. Mm. So, yes, I tell you what, adding a ring to the pyramids is so flipping phenomenal. Um, it really is. So if you added a ring to that pyramid, then, then yes, it would work within that entire space within that pyramid and it would do that restructuring of the water. Um, it would totally take your water to another level. And, and the nice thing is too, is that it synergizes and harmonizes with the energy of that Nubian. So basically the energy of the of the pyramid and the energy of the ring they would synergize and amplify each other um, and then you would bring through all the highest and best qualities and properties of each one into the water so yep that's that's a phenomenal thing gail um would love to see a picture of that if you ever do put a ring on it uh, i'd love to see a picture of it anyway uh samson hey samson um, with the quantum gridding ascension pyramid, if the tip of the pyramid gets broken off a millimeter from the tip, does it affect the energetics of the pyramid? No, not at all. With any of these pyramids, um, we're not using sacred measurements within, well, all the metals are sacred measurements. Within these guys and in the epoxy part of this, um, no, the tips can be broken off of of even these little guys here, because if you drop one of these, it, it can break the tip and it's not gonna matter. Um, the, that field is already contained within here. To me, you could probably smash this into three pieces and it's still gonna be holding the field. Um, and Renard, does the Harmony Ring clear essential oils and water as well, or is it just the 144 and the Golden Fire? Um, so out of our out of our harmonic creation field trio, the 333 megahertz, the Earth Resonance Ring, is a pretty phenomenal one for water. The 333 takes an etheric template very well, so we put the Earth Resonance Ring into here. Um, so the 333 works well with water. Now the 144 really, the 144 or any tensor field. So let's say any tensor field at all, including the 144 megahertz is gonna do great things for water. It's still gonna put the spin rate to the water. It's gonna create the ormus out of the water. It's gonna do everything for the water on that physical and energetic level, except you know for the, except for the adding of other frequencies and properties to your water or connecting the consciousness of the water more to itself. Um, those things come from like the golden fire ring. The golden fire ring is the one that is connecting more of the consciousness of the water and it's doing a, more of the clearing as well. Um, the 333 is a pretty simple basic one as would be the 144 for working with the water. Um, then we have the regeneration ring and the regeneration ring connects even more of the consciousness of the water and takes it back even farther um, connected with the water, the physical water and the consciousness of it. So the regeneration is definitely the conscious connector, but it still has the tensor fields that do great things with the water. The golden fire, again, the tensor fields do great thing with the water, but the golden fire with the water to me is one of my favorites because it is bringing through all those different frequencies and properties of the plant, crystal, mineral kingdom. It's bringing through, you know, all the, all the clearing for the water. Um, so the golden fire for the water would be my favorite one. Um, 
And again, working with the trio together is super phenomenal with the water. That's totally the way to go. But if you're going to get one ring to work with the water, I would suggest Golden Fire. And again, with the essential oils and the water bowl, with oils actually, um, the oils will actually take that spin rate easier and it'll keep it going longer. So for oils, it's, you know, you once you get that, that spin in the oil going, it it'll hold longer um it's just, i don't know why but um I, i'm sure there's lots of reasons why but um so yeah with the water or the oil it can work interchangeably there uh gail we've been looking at the practitioner set of harmonic creation trio i know there's no substitute for the ascension pyramid but this practitioner set possibly be the next best thing okay so and then gail you're the one that has the nubian the nubian pyramid and and that's it too the the pyramids that we create the 60 degree pyramids are pretty phenomenal but you know the the rest of the tools that go into these ascension pyramids are phenomenal too on their own so if you're just using Gale, the practitioner set of rings, um, great set of rings on their own. But yeah, you can totally stack them down that pyramid too to do great and wonderful things. It's not going to pull through all the energetics of the ascension pyramid, correct? But it's still going to be amplifying um, everything that that Nubian is, and it is just going to... Um, bring through everything with that harmonic creation field trio. To me, that feels really good to put that harmonic creation field trio practitioner rings onto there. And again, those practitioner rings are a phenomenal set of rings just on their own too. Um, and then C none, especially which tool do you most prefer to clean and activate the Merkaba field? Um, you know, for working with the Merkaba field, the the um, Cosmic Sun Disc is one of the most phenomenal tools I've seen for working with the torsion fields, the Merkaba fields. Um, when you hold a Cosmic Sun Disc above the head, a lot of people feel that spinning. Um, it's it's bringing in all those torsion fields from all the different Merkabas um, that that we have um and so when you hold that cosmic sun disc like the eight and a half inch one above your head it is just bringing in and integrating all of those different merkaba fields um so really working with the merkaba the cosmic sun disc is is one of the most phenomenal tools but in all reality um see none is that we have put into all of our tools that whole remembrance of the Merkaba. So a lot of people can actually just have any of these fields and it helps them reactivate that Merkaba easier. So, I mean, you know, but the space is being held within this earth anyway, as it, as it's been growing and shifting, um, that people have been having spontaneous Merkaba reactivations over the past 10 years. Um, and it just, it, it's, it's exponentially so that people will have a reactivation of the Merkaba field and not even know what a Merkaba field is, but all of a sudden they start to see colors and uh, you know, see non-visible spectrum colors, things like that, because they're seeing auric fields or, you know, they're just, they're activated. Um, so I guess I would actually say that, you know, again, using the cosmic sun disk for the, for the Merkaba, but again, it's only a tool and we can access that Merkaba pretty simply and easily on our own. Um, please do check out crystalmerkaba.com. Um, that's one of our websites, crystalmerkaba.com. And um, there's there's a lot of different Merkaba activations we've done over the years and they're they're pretty simple and easy to to follow to follow along. Um, and David asks, if I had an intention charge quartz crystal. With the tensor ring, which tensor ring would be best to radiate the energy in the quartz crystal? If you have a, a quartz crystal, so if you have a crystal that's already carrying intentions, um, and then you want to add a ring to it to amplify 
those intentions and that crystal. Um, it really doesn't matter which frequency, which qubit measure you use with that crystal. Um, it's still going to be amplifying everything. You know, really for for crystals, I kind of go back and forth between the golden fire ring for crystals and the regeneration ring. Um, I really like the regeneration ring using with crystals because to me, it, it takes it even a step higher. I mean, it's bringing in more consciousness of the crystal. Um, so really when you're working with, with crystals, um, the generators are nice. Depends on how you're working with the crystal. If you want to broadcast that energy throughout your home, that energy and information and intention, you can use any of the tensor field generators um, to help to broadcast that um, in, in, and in any frequency. So that's how I like to use my crystals is I'll put them inside of the tensor field generator to broadcast it or inside of the Gaia sphere or inside of the pyramid as in, in any of those tools will act as a broadcaster for that information. Otherwise, if you are using it for, you know, more of a localized or for a meditation style, then you can just use it in a single ring. Um, you know, using the rings with, with uh, crystal pendants is a phenomenal way to go. Um, and that's why a lot of people do add even Let's see, do I have one here? Nope, I was looking for my little infinite heart. A lot of people will actually add just the infinite heart to a crystal pendant because it does help to keep that crystal clean and clear, but also to broadcast it, amplify it. Um, is the regeneration tensor generator powerful as same as the regeneration Gaia sphere for grounding? Um, no, actually, for the regeneration tensor field generator it's more of just a big bright ball of light is what that regeneration tensor field generator is now when you add the oh, there you go when you have the regeneration gaia sphere that is the one that is very much grounding all the gaia spheres are are very much about grounding our light with the light of the earth so um, the Gaia sphere is, is definitely a lot better one for, for grounding than the generator within that regeneration frequency. Um, so let's see. I'm just jumping over here to the chat side of things and seeing what's happening. Um, So everybody here on chat, you guys are all sharing a lot of great information. Um, yeah, I appreciate that you guys can come on and and have a space here to to talk to each other to um, about everything. So, all right. Hey, you know what? Those are all the questions so far, you guys. What do you think? Any more questions here for today? I guess we did make it quite a ways. It's been 50 minutes. Boy, time flies. So um, I know we were going to do some different energy work stuff here for a while. We were going to do the Diksha blessing thing, and we never did quite get that figured out, um, which is basically it's just transferring of light. Um, I think maybe we should just jump in and do some quantum heart stuff. Because I tell you what, you guys, using these fields of neutrality is pretty flipping amazing. It, um, it changes creation, and especially right now. I mean, that's, that's what we're doing is, is when you can hold something into that field of neutrality, it's, it's such a high field that when we do that, we're not changing things to be how we want them to be. We are changing things to be how they should be in the highest and best for us right now and where we're going. Because we're, we're doing a huge mop up. We've been mopping up forever, but we're doing a huge mop up right now. Of, um, I guess before we've been moving huge 
layers and piles and crap and mess. Right now, I feel like we're just going through and just mopping things up now. We're just doing some, some nice little final cleans. And part of that is um, using this field of neutrality to me is a great tool to, to do this uh, last little clearing with. So, let's go through a meditation then. Okay, so you can close your eyes if you wish or leave them open. Again, going into the heart space, picture in your heart, your light within your heart. Sending that down into the heart of the earth and breathing in that energy right up into you. Next, connecting your light with the light of creation, source, soul, creator, God. Breathing in that energy. Then you stand as a column of light. You are breathing in the energy from both earth and from source creation. You are mixing it with you and you are sending it right back out. So then we as the human with our human heart are then that connector between the earth and creation. It's a great way to see yourself as that connector. Grounded and connected with the earth. You're a part of the earth and you are a part of creation. And we become creators on this planet. So when you're in the heart space, again, let's make sure that you have that sacred heart activated. So picture your soul standing before you. I usually see the soul as this golden being. Just ask the soul to activate your sacred heart. It'll put its hand right on your heart and it'll just activate that golden fire within the heart. Awesome. So now you have that golden fiery heart. Now then imagine right out in front of your sternum, kind of where I was showing you earlier that, that central point there in front of your sternum. Just imagine this golden ball and it's right outside of you. And imagine this golden ball as being connected into the heart of the earth. And imagine this golden ball being connected to the energy of creation. And of course, this golden ball is connected to your sacred heart. So this is the quantum heart. The quantum heart is a part of you. It is the sacred heart, the sacred space of the heart. It is the heart of the earth. It is the heart of creation. It is a gateway for you. It is a gateway into that field of neutrality. So just kind of melt into that ball and feel how that shifts your thoughts, your mental. Feel how that softens the mind and expands the heart. Now, as you are in this comfortable little bubble of light, that is you, that is earth, that is creation. And this has that field of neutrality Expand that out into your world, to your home, to your family, to your life situations. Expand that out to the situations that affect you. Again, we're not, don't go into your head about anything. Don't try to change. Don't view anything outside of yourself as good, bad, ugly, beautiful. Just expand. Just expand. Now expand that into the world. 
expand that into all others. Expand that into each and every one of us doing this right here and now. We're all together, we're intermixing. We're bringing through all that highest light. All the intentions for all of us, for humanity, for the earth, for beyond. The intentions of the highest and best for all of us. Beautiful job, you guys. That is absolutely beautiful seeing you guys all expanded out, covering this entire world. All right, my friends. Thank you for being here and thank you for the wishes for, for our mom. All is good. So I hope you guys can do this exercise once in a while. Make it your own. Um, simple and easy. But it is so flipping powerful. Um, it changes us and it changes the world. It changes everybody that comes into contact with this so thank you guys much love we'll see you next week bye